Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to discuss the Excel 2016 exam and specifically we're going to look at the domain called Manage Data Cells and Ranges, which takes up about 15 to 20 percent of the overall exam. I'm going to go ahead and throw a graphic up so you can see the domain. In today's video we're going to discuss the subdomain Summarize and Organize Data. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. This domain tells us that we need to be able to insert spark lines. I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor here in I13. To do that, I want to go to the insert tab and I'm in the spark lines group. Now you should know that there's three different things you could add here. Most likely you'll probably see the line or the column, but you could see win or loss. We'll go ahead and select spark line for this. When I click that, this dialog box opens up and it's asking me for my range. I'm going to go ahead and select B13 to H13. This section here just wants to verify it's putting it in the correct place. Because I put my cursor on I13, that's exactly where I wanted to, but you can make that change here. We'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and click off of that now that it's created that, because I want to show you something that I see my students do on a regular basis. We're going to go back to the Insert tab. We're going to go ahead and do Line again. But what I often see my students do, because the question tells them to put a spark line in this example for every month, what they'll do is they'll select the entire range here. When I click OK, get an error. It says the reference for this location or data range is not valid. And that's because I've selected too much information. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and hit Cancel here. If I needed to create a spark line for each of these rows, what I would do is with that selected, I'd probably use the drag fill here to copy that spark line down. When you're creating spark lines, just make sure you're selecting just the row or the column that it applies to. I'm going to go to a different worksheet to look at some of the other things that we need to know. I'm going to go ahead and select this first range here of the data. And I'm going to go to the data tab here at the top. One of the things that tells us we need to be able to do is to insert subtotals. We're in the outline group here. And before we begin, notice that it's sorted by the store. That's important for creating the subtotals because we're going to do our splits at the different stores. Had it been food that we needed to have splits by, we would want our food sorted here to make it easier for us. I'm going to go ahead and click the subtotal. This is tricky, so I would encourage you to do some practice with subtotals because if you see it on the certification test and you're not familiar with this, chances are it's going to stump you. You're going to have issues. You're probably going to mark it for review. You might end up wasting a lot of time on the certification exam. Our data is sorted by store, which is important here because we're going to have our change at store. We'll go ahead and change this function by default at sum to average. And our at our subtotal, we only have one set of numbers here, so we'll keep it on price. And then in this section here, you should be familiar with because you might be asked to make some changes here. Most likely, you're not going to be asked to replace the current subtotals because it's probably not going to be subtotaled. But you could be asked to change the page breaks between groups or have a summary of the data below. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And let's look at what Excel did for us. At each store, it gives us the average. I'll go ahead and open up the width of this so you can see it. Notice store A's average was $3.03. Store C was at $2.41. So what it did was it just went ahead and gave us a subtotal of our data here using the average function. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here to look at this data set here. And I'm gonna select this range. This time we're going to look at outlining the data. We're still in the data tab and we're in the outline group and I'm going to click this group drop down. You have the option if I select group to group the data by rows or by columns. But I want to look at here the auto outline and we can use the auto outline because if I look here at my data, this is actually a function. This number here, much like the number here is a function. This is a function. And because of that, Excel knows that that's kind of like a break. So let's go back. We're going to the outline group, group, drop down, auto outline. And it's asking, do you want to modify the existing outline? It's referencing what we just did. We'll click OK. Notice it went ahead and removed that and it added it here. And when I click this, notice that this information disappeared. And I can collapse this information here. I'm going to jump to the worksheet that we began on for this last section that this subdomain tells us we need to be able to do, which is conditional formatting. I'm going to go ahead and select this range here, B24 to H24. And we're on the Home tab here. We're in the Styles group. 
And here we have the conditional formatting drop down. Now you have a lot of things here. You could be asked to create a new rule from here. So you should be familiar and do some practice with creating rules. But most likely what you'll see on the certification test is applying a predefined conditional formatting that Excel already has. And so you have the highlight cell rules, which gives you the greater than or text contains. You have the top and bottom rules, the data bars, which has the gradient fill or the solid fill. You have color scales and icon sets. For this, we're going to look at the top and bottom rules. And what I'm going to do here is the top 10%, because I want to show you this right here. Even though it says top 10%, if we wanted to apply 25, we have that option. And it's not always apparent on that screen. And so with that, we can change it to 25. Notice it updated the formatting to display the 25%. Over here, we also have the option to change some of our conditional formatting. So if you wanted yellow fill with dark yellow text, you could. You could apply a custom format here with fonts and borders and fill. So if you wanted to do something crazy, you could. For this, we'll just go ahead and apply the yellow fill with dark green and we'll click OK. Applying the conditional formatting is easy, but you could get lost in there if you're not familiar with the different groups and formatting types that you can apply. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.